everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by N. Gregory Mankiw, 6th edition. We're going to be doing chapter 4, problem number 13. The beginning of the problem reads as follows. Suppose that the price of basketball tickets at your college is determined by market forces. Currently, the demand and supply schedules are as follows. And then they give you these numbers here. And this is a pretty interesting problem not only because of what's shown here, but actually in reality a number of schools are trying some interesting things with ticket auctions or dynamic pricing for tickets, stuff like that. And if that's something that you're curious about, I would recommend that you Google some articles. I think innovative things are happening at Northwestern University and also Stanford University. But anyway, we have our demand and supply schedules here. And notice that when we say a demand schedule or a supply schedule, that just means that we're given a table of price and quantity pairs. So we're basically being given the information in a table that would go onto our demand curve or our supply curve. Part A of the question asks us to draw the demand and supply curves and also asks what, un what is unusual about this supply curve and why might this make sense in this particular instance. So let's think about this. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'll give you a two-scale version of the demand and supply curves. I'll put a little Excel overlay here. Let's pause and look at that for a second. But for the purposes of just doing this on the board, let's just make sure that we know, roughly speaking, what our demand and supply curves look like. So if we look at the demand curve here, we'll notice that the law of demand holds that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded in that as the price goes up from $4 to $20, the quantity demanded goes down from 10,000 to 2,000. So at least in a general sense, we're gonna see a demand curve, as we would expect, that's downward sloping. And again, not to scale, but you can get a two scale version of this by just plotting each of the individual points keeping in mind that quantity is the thing on the x-axis or the horizontal axis here. So these are the x-coordinates of your points and these are the y-coordinates of your points. But now let's think about the supply curve. So we look at the supply curve here and we notice that the quantity supplied is always 8,000 regardless of what the price is. So we can actually draw that in a very specific and you know it's easy to draw that to scale here because what that means is that our supply curve, our quantity supply does not respond to price. In economic terminology, that means that our supply is perfectly inelastic. So when that happens, because we're always going to be point, plotting points that are at 8,000 on the quantity axis, and just at various different points on the price axis, we're just going to end up with a vertical line. So at a basic level, we can look at our demand and supply curves like this and then just go from there. So normal looking demand curve, and then we have this vertical supply curve to contend with, and this is actually going to be enough for us to actually show what's going on in this market. And we were asked, well, why might this make sense? Why might the quantity supplied of tickets be unresponsive to price? And if you think about what's going on, you know, this is whatever basketball stadium you have at your school and there are a fixed number of seats, and there's no reason to not sell tickets for all of those seats, because the marginal cost of having someone in that seat is basically zero, so why not sell it? But you can't sell more tickets than you actually have seats. You, know, you might have some standing room only area or something like that, but that's still factored into you know, your capacity of your venue, and you can't really, a high price can't make the venue magically bigger, at least not in the short term. So that would be one case where it makes sense that this supply would not be responsive to price. Part B of the question asks us to find the equilibrium price and quantity of tickets. So if we had drawn this graph to scale, we could find our equilibrium price and quantity at the intersection of the supply curve and the demand curve. We didn't draw this totally to scale, but we can see because this supply curve, the quantity is basically fixed at 8,000, we can see that this point of intersection is going to be at 8,000 
So we can say that 8,000 is the equilibrium quantity in our market. And then it's just a matter of figuring out what this equilibrium price is. And to do that, if we haven't drawn this to scale, we could just go back to the supply and demand schedule to see that. So the condition for economic equilibrium is that economic equilibrium is at the point where at the relevant prices here, the same price for the buyer and the seller, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied are the same. So we could just look here and say, well, where are the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied the same? And that's just going to be at a price of $8, right? So we can see here that this is where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. At prices lower than that, our quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. So we'd have a shortage in economic terms. And at prices higher than the equilibrium price, our quantity demanded is going to be less than the quantity supplied. And in economic terms, we're going to have a surplus. So we can say here that this P star, this equilibrium price, has, has to be, in fact, $8. Pretty cheap basketball tickets, if you ask me. Part C of the question gives us some new students at our school. It says, your college plans to increase total enrollment next year by 5,000 students. The additional students will have the following demand schedule. And then we're given this incremental demand for our new students. So again, we see at lower prices, we have more of the additional 5,000 students demanding basketball tickets. And at higher prices, we have fewer of the new students demanding tickets, which is what we would expect. And now we're given some instructions. It says, now add the old demand schedule and the demand schedule for the new students to calculate the new demand schedule for the entire college. So that's straightforward enough to do. That we can say, well, if we have these two groups, then at a price of $4, 10,000 of the old students and 4,000 of the new students want to purchase basketball tickets. So we can update this. And we can say that this new demand here is 14000 Similarly, at a price of $8, we had 8000 of the old students and 3000 of the new students demanding basketball tickets for a total demand of 11000 So we'd have to update this with 11000 At a price of $12, we have 6,000 of the old students and 2,000 of the new students demanding basketball tickets. So we have to update this guy to 8,000. At a price of $16, we have 4,000 of the old students and 1,000 of the new students demanding basketball tickets for a total demand of 5,000. And at a price of $20, we had 2,000 of the old students and none of the new students demanding basketball tickets, so we don't actually have to change this number. And this is an example, a point by point example of the concept of horizontal addition, where we're trying to combine the demands for two different groups of people. Well, the way we can do that is to just say, at each individual price, what are the quantities demanded by the two groups? Well, let's add those together to get the total demand at that price. And we'll notice here, I want to take away this circle, because it's no longer the case that this price of $8 is our equilibrium price, because now at this price of $8, we have a quantity demanded of 11000 and a quantity supplied of 8,000, so we in fact now have a shortage at this price. The last thing that the question asks is what is the new equilibrium price and quantity for tickets for this basketball arena? And we could look here, notice I took away the original equilibrium price because it's no longer an equilibrium price. But I feel comfortable saying that my equilibrium quantity is still going to be 8,000 because regardless of whatever price we're at, our intersection of demand and supply is always going to be at a quantity of 8,000 because our supply is always at 8,000. So let's think about what's happening here. 
when I have the new demand, I could actually look on my demand schedule and my supply schedule to see what my equilibrium price and quantity are going to be. And again, I'm just looking for the price at which the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So I go along here and I see, oh look, and now at a price of $12, my quantity demanded and quantity supplied are both 8,000. So I can see now that my new equilibrium price is $12. And that would be something, you know, $12 would be about up here. So we can say that our equilibrium price is $12 and our equilibrium quantity is 8,000. But you'll notice that I purposely drew this price at something higher than was on the original demand curve because remember, our original demand curve intersected with our supply curve at a price of eight. So we can think about putting graphically what actually happened to our numbers here. And what we saw was that we had an increase in demand. That at every price, when these new students came in, we're demanding more tickets than we were before. And we said that an increase in demand looks like a shift to the right of the demand curve. Now, in this particular instance, we don't literally get a parallel shift to the right because we didn't always add the same quantity of tickets. You know, we added at some prices 4,000 and at some prices zero. But nonetheless, the same logic applies that we get this rightward shift of demand if the price stayed at $8, we would have a shortage at this price, whereas we would have had an equilibrium before. You know, this is our old price of $8. And that shortage, the market forces caused by that shortage, push the prices up to curtail demands to some degree and bring the market back into equilibrium. So you can see how we describe something with numbers and with tables of numbers, but it does actually correspond to those qualitative diagrams that we were drawing as well.